know about you, but I thank God that I do have a new name written down in glory. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know I got one there. And I know that the Lord has promised that he will reveal, he will unfold that name to us, to me. And I'm just looking forward to that day. Tomorrow night, we're going to have a, such a wonderful time here. And since there's no meeting on Thursday night, and since there's a holiday on Friday, we want to really encourage you to make sure that all of your family members are here tomorrow night that we might have a gigantic midweek service. We want you to bring your spouses. We want you to bring your loved ones, your friends. We want you to bring those guests that have been accompanying you on various occasions. And we're just going to have a great midweek service. We also will, as has been mentioned, if you have any particular prayer need, and I'm sure that our ushers have those special slips. Um, one can be placed to you, given to you at any time. But we also want to address these particular needs. And we know that our God is well able, well able to meet, to address, to supply uh, the answers to whatever might be our needs. Don't miss tomorrow night. Time is truly quickly winding down with respect to these Save the Family meetings. There's only a few more left. And then the Save the Family uh, series of meetings will somewhat conclude, even though such an emphasis with respect to our families will always be ongoing right on through to the second coming of the Lord. But we want to see our families saved. And so join us again tomorrow night and let's have a grand, wonderful time together. You know, you know, Brother Butler told me uh, not to say too much again on that matter of, you know, if you bring 10 people out and you make sure that each of you have your 10 people that he and his daughter will sing. And I don't know, maybe, may, may, may see, you all didn't really believe that, hey, because you all didn't bring them. And, 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 and you had, you even had the echoes of truth singing for you on Sunday night. And that was to give you a little, just a little glimpse of his ability and potential. And, and that was only to whet your appetite. But I'm sure if, if you meet the challenge, have mercy, we will have such a duet out here that even angels will come by and bend their, fold their wings in listening to that tremendous duet. Tonight, tonight, how? Mm -mm. My wife is killing me. Let's see what the word of God has to say about that. Let's bow our heads together for prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you continue to send our way. We're grateful, Lord, that you care about us. And now as we open the sacred pages of Scripture, we pray that again, thou wouldst open our minds that we might understand our hearts, that we will be receptive to thy will and to thy way. And enable, dear God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be pleasing to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are perhaps many ways in which many persons, many spouses, many husbands, uh, probably do make that exclamation every now and then uh, pertaining to help. My wife is killing me. I'm sure that in, in different ways, this has been sounded. However, I once heard one authority say uh, that more people commit suicide with a knife, fork, and spoon than any other weapon. And there are many a wife who has a lot to do with a knife, a fork, and a spoon. And because they have so much to do with that, and because they are trusted by their spouse with respect to that knife, and that spoon, and that fork, I am going to be the spokesperson for those husbands 
And even for those persons who sit down before those tables, before those ladies, I'm going to say on their behalf, help! Somebody is killing us. And it has a lot to do with what the Word of God says in 3rd John verse 2. Third to last book of the Bible. You know the last book of the Bible is Revelation and then the book before Revelation is Jude and then the book just before Jude is 3rd John. There were three epistles of the Apostle John. First, second, and third. We're looking at 3rd John and we're looking at verse 2. Verse 2. 3rd John verse 2. And the word of God says, Beloved, what? That thou mayest prosper and be in health even as even as thy soul doth prosper. You will find consistently with respect to the word of God that God is interested in the prosperity of our soul. He is very interested in us being fulfilled totally. He's very interested in every aspect even of what happens to our bodies. And that's why he also says in 1 Corinthians, turn there with me after the four Gospels and then Acts and Romans, we come to 1 Corinthians. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, the word of God says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, Scripture says, whether therefore ye eat, or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of who? God. Again, this indicates the interest that God has in us, even as it relates to what we may consume, or even whatever we might do. Therefore, to avoid this penetrating cry uh, that goes forth exclaiming help my wife is killing me one of the very first things that is very important for every family is to eat right to eat right God is interested in our eating and there are some people who eat to live and there are other people who live to eat. And those who live to eat are, are a bit more robust than me. Then there are those who may eat to live who may look a bit more like me. Uh, but God is very interested uh, that, that the legend be changed that has even prevailed within the Bahamas. You perhaps have heard about this legendary person whose wife loved him so much and cared for him immensely. And uh, she was a consistent lady in preparing his meals and even in giving him various treats. And on this given occasion, being such a marvelous cook and being able to bake a number of delicious things, she had prepared a number of dinner rolls. And in fact, she baked so much because she knew of his enormous appetite that in fact she had prepared about a hundred rolls. And to enable uh, and to ensure that as he ate, he also was able to make sure that everything went down she always, she always gave him some switcher, always, uh, to make sure that that which he consumed was also washed down. And so on this given day, he began to eat, and he ate, 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 and he continued to eat, so much so that he consumed 99 of those rolls. But being the considerate man that he was, he 
he lost her one. And when she asked him the question, why did you leave me one row? He said, well, what do you think? Do you consider me to be some kind of a hawk? <laughs> there are some people who live to eat. And because of their what we would call enormous appetite, they can run into problems. God would have us to maintain a balanced diet. In fact, in the very first diet that was given to mankind in Genesis chapter 1, the first book of the Bible, we will find that it was well balanced. When we look in verse 29 of Genesis chapter 1, first chapter of the first book, of the Bible and in the 29th verse we will find that after the creation of the male and the female Adam and Eve verse 29 says and God said behold I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat you will note that in many of your Bibles, there will be a little letter of the alphabet sometimes that will be beside a little word or, or on top of a little word, and then you'll see a, a meaning of that word in the margin in order to help to explain that particular word. Well, in many Bibles, you will see there uh, that there is explained the meaning of meat in this reference in that it pertains to food. It is not really in reference to fleshly meats. It is talking about food in general. The first diet that man was privileged to consume consisted of grains, nuts, and fruits. That was mankind's first diet. And this was in a sinless state. There were no Jews around. There was no infection by sin. There was only Adam and Eve. And God gave them a diet to where they would have had sufficient to ensure that they had their bodybuilding um, ingredients, that they would have had their vitamins and minerals, and that they would have also had their energy supply in those nuts, fruits, and grains. And God pronounced, and it's interesting, that God pronounced that diet in verse 31. Look what the word of God says in Genesis 1. And God said, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Even the very first diet that God recommended to mankind, he said, he said it was very good. Now, now, this is important because it was God who made them. And the manufacturer always knows what is best and what should go into that which has been manufactured. God being the creator knows what is best to go into us. This was the first diet in this sinless environment. Now after sin entered the picture in Genesis chapter 3, we will find that God did add something else to the diet. In verse 18 and 19 of Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says, in fact we can begin from verse 17 of Genesis 3, Scripture says, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. You know, sometimes, man, um, it's better to listen to God. <laughs> if your wife says it, it gives you any advice which is contrary to the word of God, it's better to listen to God. Incidentally, wives, if your husband gives you any advice that is contrary to the word of God, you listen to the voice of God too. 
Because when you mess up, listen to what God has to say. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And that's why we have weeds. Hmm? In that sinless environment, there was no weeds. But today you notice why there's so much weeds in your grass. And it's hard to get rid of them. The root of weeds seem like they go down so far. That's because it's letting us know that sin goes down so far. So the word of God here points out. He said, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Now you will note, this is something new. Originally, you know who was supposed to eat the herbs of the field? In chapter 1 and verse 30, it was supposed to be the beast of the earth and the fowls of the air and all that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 30 says, I have given every green herb for meat. It was originally meant for them. But after sin, God permitted, he told us, you better eat it now. You see what sin has done to us? Literally, sin has brought us down to an animal level. Literally. Verse 19 of Genesis 3 went on to say, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Fleshy meat like beef was not allowed into the mouth of human beings until after the flood. When you study the book of Genesis, chapter 3, sin has entered into the picture. Chapter 6, God tells Noah that his spirit, in verse 3, shall not always strive with man. Uh, Genesis 6, verse 3, for that he is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and uh, 20 years and then chapter 7 lets us know how God sent a flood upon the face of the earth in verse 11 of Genesis 7 it says in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month uh, the 17th day of the month the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open then the word of God lets us know in chapter 9 Scripture then says in chapter 9, verse 9, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every animal, every beast rather, of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. That's why there is also animosity and tension and fear that exists even between man and animals and fish and the creatures even of the air. Then it goes on. In verse 3, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat, that is food for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But the flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof shall ye not eat and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it at the hand of every man at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man whosoever sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God made he man. God never wanted human beings to be taking one another's life. But with respect to animal flesh, God indicated that even with the consumption of that, they were not supposed to eat it with the blood in it. Because the life is in the blood. Now it is interesting that before 
Testament. You study the word of God. Before mankind began to consume the fleshy animals, before the consumption of the fleshy animals, mankind lived on the average for 900 plus years. Study Genesis chapter 5. And where you will read there about this one beginning the next one and beginning the next one. And their lifespan added up for 900 years. This one, 930 the next one, 950 another one. But after fleshy foods was introduced into the diet, when you come to Genesis chapter 11, you see suddenly how there is a shortage with respect to lifespan. It gets less and less and less when you study Genesis 11 right on through down to verse 32. You see how the lifespan gets shorter and shorter and shorter to where Terah, Abram's father, verse 32, says he died in Haran and he was only 205 years old. When Abraham died, the word of God lets us know in Genesis chapter 20. Uh, Genesis chapter 25 scripture lets us know that when he died in verse 7 of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 7 Abraham's lifespan totaled a hundred three score and 15 years that's 175 years beloved that's that's tremendously shorter than 900 when you come down to the time of Moses when you read Psalm 90 Moses says that on the average, the span of a person's life may be three score and ten. And if by the mercy of God, it might expand uh, to four score. That's why we marvel today if a person makes it to a hundred years. We say, wow, that person's old. That's marvelous. That's nothing compared to what was. That's nothing compared to 900. But this has all occurred because of sin as well as because of how mankind diets. It has also shortened the lifespan of mankind. Interestingly enough, Nutritionists may vary on with respect to this particular area, but three basic food groups. One, as I mentioned earlier, your energy-giving foods. Uh, we call them starches, like rice, potato, things of like nature, bread. Your energy foods, like carbohydrates. Also, your body-building foods, like proteins. If you happen to consume meat, then it has to do with meat and fish and eggs. If, if you happen not to consume that, then it may have to, has to do with like peas and lentils and, and beans, legumes. Uh, then also the protective foods where you get even an abundance of your vitamins and minerals from. Like your fruits and, and green leafy vegetables. Now, interestingly enough, doctors are today recognizing that there is a certain superiority for the lacto-ovo vegetarian or vegetarian diet. Doctors today are even saying, even doctors that may not prescribe to that diet by practicing it, many of them are still saying that this is even superior. Because they recognize today what mankind has been doing with respect to pollution. But if one is going to consume meat products, then you need to also consume that which God has said to consume. In order that your life can be more beneficial. And I figure that since God is the creator, since God made us, 
since God manufactured us, he must know what is best to go in us. You see, I don't argue with those who made my car. And when I read my owner's manual, I have never, never thought to argue with it and say I'm going to put sand in my gas tank rather than gasoline. Even though sand is cheaper. Hmm? But I don't put that in there. Now I don't put that in there because you didn't say put it in there. I don't put that in there because the manufacturer didn't say it, don't put it in there. If the manufacturer said that that car could run by sand, I would put sand in there. But he said it must run with gas, fuel. So that's what I use. Now I figure the manufacturer should know since he made the car. I figure Nissan should know. If it was a Ford, that Ford should know. If it was a GM car, that GM should know. If it was a BMW, that they should know. I'm not gonna, if I had a Mercedes, uh, then I, I, I would even be careful there. I, I would use diesel. Hmm? Because that's what they say it runs with. I would be careful. So God says he knows what you should run with better. And he has outlined it. And in fact, the word of God has devoted two whole chapters so that we would understand this. God elaborates on what he originally stipulated in two whole chapters. And I say what he originally stipulated because, beloved, God has indicated that there is something called clean and unclean. And he first mentioned it in the book of Genesis. Before there was any Jew, before there was any Israelite, God mentioned it when he was getting ready to destroy this world the first time with water. And in Genesis chapter 7, you know what's interesting there in verse 1 and 2? The word of God says, And the Lord God said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Then he said in verse 2, Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and female, and of the, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of the fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and female, to keep seed alive upon the, all the earth, upon the face of all the earth. Now, beloved, this is way over in Genesis. Here is Noah, uh, about the seventh about the, 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 about, the, about the eighth or so generation uh, from Abraham, from, from Adam rather, from Adam rather. And he knew what was required because his great, 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 great grandfather had passed the message down. And he knew. And God also reiterated it to him when God was getting ready to wipe out all flesh upon the earth. But he knew that since all vegetation was going to be destroyed and everything outside of the ark was going to be destroyed, when Adam, when, when, when Noah and his family would come forth from the ark, they're going to need something to eat. And because God is particular about what goes into mankind, he told them, I want you to take into the ark clean and unclean animals. But I want you to take more clean than unclean. The reason I want you to take more clean is because you're going to be eating the clean. And not only that, because also the clean were likewise going to be sacrificed to the Lord. Because the Lord does not accept unclean. The Lord wants clean. That's why when we come to him, he cleans us up. That's why when he says those that enter into the kingdom of heaven, those who are going to be able to live with the Lord forever, they're going to have to have been cleaned up by the Lord. Because he's a clean Lord. He's a clean God. So to help us to 
understand what was his will, what is his purpose, what he has best for us. He devoted two full chapters, Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. And he expanded his message as it related to that which is clean and that which is unclean. And we find that he speaks about various animals. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 14, there is listed many there. And the word of God points out to us that, note what the word of God says first of all in verse 2 of, of, of Deuteronomy 14. He says, for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Remember I've told you before that God wants his people to be the head and not the tail. He wants them to be able to have superior intellect, superior health, uh, to have a better way of life. Now he says... Now, 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 these are for them who want to be his people. Now, if you don't want to be his people, then you ain't got to follow this. But he says, if you want to be his people, then he says, this is what I have for you in order that you can be the tops. Then he points out quite clearly, he lists a number of things here. And, and, and in essence, the Lord is pointing out and saying that all animals that do not have a split hoof and who do not chew the cord, he says any animal that does not have both of those things, a split hoof and chew the cord, he says if the animal does not do both or have both of these things, he says it's unclean. So the cow is clean because the cow has a split hoof and it chews the cord. The goat has a split hoof and it chews the cord. Sheep, they have split hooks and they chew the cord. They're all right. Now, there is this spectacular animal around who's sweet. She's sweet, man. And, 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 you know, she round. Huh? You know her. Huh? And she waddles a little bit. When she moves, even got a little sway for you, huh? Now, 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 and she produces a wide variety of meats. Sometimes you call it ham. Sometimes you call it pork chops. Uh, sometimes, uh, 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 you, 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 in fact, almost every part of her body you can eat. You can eat the snout. You can eat the tongue, you can eat even the, the feet, you can even eat the intestines. You know, they call it a fancy name, chitlins. <laughs> uh, you even consume the area around their ribs, called the spear ribs. There are some who even eat the brain of it. They even, some folks will even consume that little weakly part back there called the tail. It's amazing and God knew that mankind would taste it that's why he specifically spoke about it that's why he in fact he 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 called it out he said in verse 8 and it's interesting you know that he identified this one here clearly he said and the swine another name for pig another name for hawk Hmm? And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cord, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Now, beloved, the Lord said this here. And I figure the Lord must know why he's saying what he's saying. But, but in order that we might be helped a little bit, let me point out a couple of things that medical science has been able now to verify as it relates to this particular animal. 
and, and, and it's astounding. God stated it, and, and he oftentimes wants us to exercise faith in what he has said. Uh, but science has been able to bear out what the Lord has stipulated. The pork is infested with what is known as microscopic worms or parasites, which produce a disease known as trichinosis. And, 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 and those who eat the pork products, byproducts, Beloved, many times they break down in a whole variety of illnesses and it can be traced back to these parasites and worms that are found clogging their, 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 their arteries and whatnot, causing problems, um, even causing heart problems for persons, causing problems even, beloved, um, 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 in, in the in, in, in intestines. The consumption of bacon and the spear ribs and the pork chops and that Christmas ham is making a ham out of you. Now, now I want you to understand. See, the Lord, it is true that when the Lord made all the animals, remember on that sixth day, he said it was very good. Every animal that God made was made for a purpose. And the pig was placed here as a natural, as a natural garbage collector. <laughs> That's why it was placed here. God had his way of naturally ensuring that his earth was going to be maintained. And, and everything was going to be well balanced. And the pig had its function. It was supposed to clean up the waste. But rather than us allowing the pig to do its work, we're cleaning up the pig. <laughs> and then we go to the doctor, and we say, Doctor, I got this pain here. I don't know what it is. <laughs> and the doctor's been eating the pork too, so he, he can't even figure out what it is. Beloved, if you follow what the Lord says, you won't mess up. Scripture also indicated that not only was God concerned about the animals on land, but God was also concerned about also uh, the, the creatures in the sea. And the Lord also specified, yes, you can eat the fish that are in the ocean, but there are certain creatures in the ocean that the Lord indicated they're not good for you either. So the Lord said, now, if it has fins, and scales he says if it has those two things you notice another two things remember on land it has to chew the cord and have a split hook in the ocean it has to have fins and scales the Lord says now if they have those two things it's all right for you he says but if they don't have that he said now 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 you better leave it alone and, and he said now now regardless of if they got all those pretty names he said, you still better believe, believe, leave it alone. He says, even those delicacies, the ones that cost a lot of money, like Sir, uh, Sir Lobster. Huh? And, 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 and even Cunt Crab. He said, you got to leave that alone. He said, you even got to leave alone Miss Shrimp. As much of a delicacy as she might be, he said, you got to leave that alone. And he said, you got to leave alone all those clams. And, and, and then he said, because there's a king that's prevailing around here, known as King Conk, he says, the king of kings and lord of lords says that King Conk is not to be consumed by human beings. That's why, you know, the other day, a couple of years ago, when they had that big thing concerning, you know, uh, the, the, the conch crisis, and all these people run into the hospital, uh, saying, I'm sick this way and sick that way. I had no problem with that. Mm -mm. You see me? I had not one bit of sickness where that was concerned. 
None whatsoever. Now what's interesting, I have spoken to dietitians, and I remember a particular hospital I was visiting, and a patient was picking up a dietary sheet. And the patient had been taken off all fats. The person was heavy and big, was strained in her heart, and the doctor had prescribed, look, I'm eliminating fat from your diet. And when she went to the dietitian, she went there with almost tears in her eyes. And she said, you mean I can't eat any more conch? <laughs> and the dietitian said, do you know that conch is so high in fat? She said, but I love my scotch conch. I can't help any more conch. The dietitian indicated to her, if you don't want to be conked out, you better stop eating conk. <laughs> Beloved, God never intended that these shallow fish were to be consumed by human beings. They were also placed in the ocean to help to clean the ocean. Now we have to permit these creatures to do the work they were assigned to do rather than assisting them in their occupation. God knows what's best for our bodies. And it is wise to follow the all-wise God's dietary plan, beloved. You will live longer, you will live healthier, and you will be more productive in your life. And the Lord has indicated in Isaiah 66, verse 15 and 17, he gives a solemn warning. He says, therefore, behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots, like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and to rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one of the tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. You know those persons who on the outside say, yeah, yeah, you know, they look, they pretend, you know, they go to church, they sit down, but after they hide away in the house and they, they nibble in a little of this and a little of that, Lord says, I see what you're doing. And when I come to finally clean up this world by fire, and you're going to be licking on all that pork chop, and you're going to be licking on all that conk, well, when the fire comes, it's going to lick you too. The Lord is saying, beloved, he doesn't want us to be messed up. Rather, the Lord wants us to live long, to be healthy, holy, and happy. Our diet must be a balanced diet, and if we are going to consume meats, make sure it is clean meats, the biblically description pertaining to clean meats. And beloved, this requirement God did not nail to the cross with the death of Jesus because this requirement existed before sin clean and unclean was a designation that existed way back in Genesis and in Acts chapter 10 even when Peter had that vision and he saw a sheet come down from out of heaven and there were all manner of creatures contained therein and in Acts chapter 10, the word of God mentions that, that even while Peter was in vision, Acts 10 verse 12, and he saw all manner of four-footed beasts and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And you know, he was told to rise, kill, and eat. And you know what Peter said? He said, not so, Lord. Uh-uh, I will not do that. God does test us. Then, and he went on to say, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And then God spoke to him a second time and said, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And so therefore a person say, Now you see there? Therefore God cleansed and cleaned up those unclean animals. 
verse 16 says this was done thrice meaning three times and then it was received up into heaven now you know what's interesting verse 17 says now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean Peter was pondering this vision thinking on it now I want you to note nowhere did it mention that Peter rose up and tried to eat any of the animals that's significant but as Peter was thinking and pondering on this vision and seeking to find out what it was all about and the spirit was with him because verse 19 lets us know what the spirit said unto him. And then as he was further contemplating it, verse 28, we hear Peter talking. Verse 28 says, and he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. God gave him a vision of these animals to let him know that he, Peter, God was using symbolism in order to press home to Peter that in reality he is saying that all human beings are equal in God's sight and that Peter who was a Jew was not to refer to any Gentile whether it's a Roman whether it's a Greek whether it's a Bahamian whether it's a American he is not to refer to any of them as being common or unclean simply because they're not a Jew because Jesus came to die for human beings in fact Jesus sent the pigs down the river devils on a given occasion when Jesus encountered them the word of God lets us know in Matthew 8 in fact verse 32 that when Jesus cast out these devils uh, from these demoniacs and they said Lord Lord don't destroy us uh, but but let us enter into those pigs you see the devils like to get in pigs and the devils went in them read it it's in the word of God you know beloved Matthew 8 and, and, and after the devils got in them uh, then the pigs jumped over a ledge and ended up killing themselves in the river <laughs> have mercy beloved don't let the devil get in you because it will cause you to jump off the ledge too it pays to follow what the word of God says beloved in the vision that was given it had to do with differentiating beloved not 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 seeking with respect to animals but it was pointing out that all mankind is the same in God's sight it is significant that the designation pertaining to clean and unclean even existed way after Jesus returned to heaven for in the last book of the Bible do you know that the Word of God still speaks about unclean and the last book of the Bible Revelation chapter 18 here is John the Revelator and John the Revelator is mentioning in the Word of God he's describing a false religious system and he parallels this false religious system to even unclean and hateful birds for he says in verse 2 of Revelation chapter 18 and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird if there was no more designation of that which was unclean then John the Revelator would not have understood and we would not understand what God means by this. It would not have made sense to maintain such a designation if there was no longer any such thing as clean and unclean beasts or birds or creatures. But because it still exists, such a designation makes sense. God is interested in what is best for us. That's why the word of God said in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, whatsoever ye eat 
or drink whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of God now we shared with you in a previous message pertaining to drinking uh, now some things beloved are fine to drink God has no problem providing it is not fermented uh, providing it is not colic beer of any nature liquor of any nature you know there was somebody who told somebody the other day well I don't drink alcohol I only drink rum <laughs> well to help this person understand God's also talking about rum whether it's the rum you get in the bar or if you're even drinking the rum you buy from the, from, from, from the store even if you're drinking bay rum God don't want you to drink that there either no kind of rum does the Lord want to go into your body, beloved. God does not want anything to go in which can sap you of life. And anything, beloved, that is going to create a dependence upon a chemical, even drugs, beloved, narcotic drugs, God says leave alone. Tobacco, God says leave alone. Anything that may have nicotine in it, anything even that may have caffeine in it, for caffeine is also an addictive drug. It has a poisonous alkaline in it, beloved. So that's why even certain coffees and even certain cola drinks that has caffeine in it is not good for you for it is creating a dependence in you on that thing. And it has an insidious poison in it, an alkaline in it, beloved, that is poisoning the system. That's why God is saying leave it all alone anything that is going to cause a shortening of your life God does not want you to consume that beloved he's a particular God and he's a holy God but he's also a loving God a caring God and he recommends what's the best for us so beloved take advantage of what's best and believe you me if you line up to what the Lord says you can be in your 30s and 40s and 50s and still be looking and moving like a teenager as if you're in your 20s. Just look at me. I told you all before, I only get in gray hair in order to keep company with my wife. That's all. You know, she looks distinguished with that spot, so the Lord said, well, so that she won't feel too lonely. Huh? Uh, the reason for that, you know. But God, 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 beloved, will give us an abundant life if we are also willing to follow what he has outlined. Amen. And God would have us to do all for his glory and for his honor. So wives, when that husband says, help, my wife is killing me. Please don't let it be because of the diet. Actually, we hope it's not for other things too. <laughs> but since we're talking tonight on the diet, we don't want it to be as it relates to diet. Nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus recognized that we indeed needed great help. And so he came down from glory stepped into our humanity and even as this week recalls he went all the way to a cross at Calvary and as he hung there on the cross shedding his shed blood shedding his sacred blood he was doing so in order that you and I might come to the fountain that's filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins but sinners that plunge therein are able to find all their sin stains removed, beloved. Jesus came down in order that you and I could go up. By his life, by his death, by his resurrection, Jesus offers you and me a better way of life. Jesus demonstrates that he is practically interested 
in our existence. When he hung there on the cross and when he was wounded in his head, he was wounded in his head in order that you and I can have clean thoughts. But the wounds in his head were for our, our thoughts of sin. When he was wounded in his side, it was because of our feelings that are sinful at times. He was wounded in his hands. It was because of the actions that we do that are harmful and sinful at times. He was wounded in his feet. It was because of the places that we go and the deeds that we do that he says are sinful and wrong. And he was wounded in all of these areas in order to atone for our sins. That's why, beloved, I have no problem in doing what Jesus asked of me. Because when I see what he did for me, I can only help and respond in saying, Lord, what would thou have me do? What do you require of me? And he says, I only want your life. I only want to give you eternity. I want to give you a better way of life. So he says, would you be willing to surrender your lips to me? For if you do, then it will help me to regulate what goes into your mouth. Will you surrender your brain to me? If you do, then I'll help you in what you think. Will you surrender your feet to me? If you do, then I will guide you to where you need to go. Will you surrender your hands to me? Then I will enable you and I will assist you in the things that you need to do. He says, will you present your bodies to me? A living sacrifice. He says, I'm not interested in your, you being dead and shortening your life. He says, I want you to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto me, which is really your reasonable service. He says, am I asking too much of you? After all, look what I did for you. Tonight I ask you, is he asking too much of you? Tonight I ask you, would you respond to the Lord and simply say, Lord, I just surrender my all to you. Whatever you ask, Lord, I'm willing to do because I know that you love me and that you only want what's best for me. So tonight as we end this service, I ask you simply, are you willing to just surrender your all to Jesus and to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord? Are you willing to do that tonight? If you are, won't you just slip to your feet with me? groups. Nutritionists may vary on with respect to this particular area, but three basic food groups. One, as I mentioned earlier, your energy-giving foods. Uh, we call them starches, like rice, potato, things of like nature, bread, your energy foods like carbohydrates. Also, your body building foods like proteins. 
if you happen to consume meat, then it has to do with meat and fish and eggs. If, if you happen not to consume that, then it may have to, has to do with like peas and lentils and, and beans, legumes. Uh, then also the protective foods where you get even an abundance of your vitamins and minerals from. Like your fruits and, and green leafy vegetables. Now interestingly enough, doctors are today recognizing that there is a certain superiority for the lacto-ovo vegetarian or vegetarian diet. Doctors today are even saying, even doctors that may not prescribe to that diet by practicing it, many of them are still saying that this is even superior because they recognize today what mankind has been doing with respect to pollution. But if one is going to consume meat products, then you need to also consume that which God has said consume in order that your life can be more beneficial. And I figure that since God is the creator, since God made us, since God manufactured us, he must know what is best to go in us. You see, I don't argue with those who made my car. And when I read my owner's manual, I have never, never thought to argue with it and say I'm going to put sand in my gas tank rather than gasoline. Even though sand is cheaper. Hmm? But I don't put that in there. Now, I don't put that in there because you didn't say put it in there. I don't put that in there because the manufacturer didn't say it, don't put it in there. If the manufacturer said that that car could run by sand, I would put sand in there. But he said it must run with gas, fuel. So that's what I use. Now, I figure the manufacturer should know since he made the car. I figure Nissan should know. If it was a Ford, that Ford should know. If it was a GM car, that GM should know. If it was a BMW, that they should know. I'm not going to. If I had a Mercedes, uh, then I, I would even be careful there. I, I would use diesel. Hmm? Because that's what they say it runs with. I would be careful. So God says he knows what you should run with better. And he has outlined it. And in fact, the word of God has devoted two whole chapters so that we would understand this. God elaborates on what he originally stipulated in two whole chapters. And I say what he originally stipulated because, beloved, God has indicated that there is something called clean and unclean. And he first mentioned it in the book of Genesis. Before there was any Jew, before there was any Israelite, God mentioned it when he was getting ready to destroy this world the first time with water. And in Genesis chapter 7, you know what's interesting there in verse 1 and 2, the word of God says, And the Lord God said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Then he said in verse 2, Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and female, and of, the, and of beasts that are not clean, by two, the male and his female. Of the fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and female, to keep seed alive upon the, all the earth, upon the face of all the earth. Now, beloved, this is way over in Genesis. Here is Noah, uh, about the seventh, about the, 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 about the, about the eighth or so generation uh, from Abraham, from, from Adam rather, from Adam rather. And he knew what was required because his great, 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 great grandfather had passed the message down. And he knew. 
And God also reiterated it to him when God was getting ready to wipe out all flesh upon the earth. But he knew that since all vegetation was going to be destroyed and everything outside of the ark was going to be destroyed, when Adam, when, when, when Noah and his family would come forth from the ark, they're going to need something to eat. And because God is particular about what goes into mankind, he told them, I want you to take into the ark clean and unclean animals. But I want you to take more clean than unclean. The reason I want you to take more clean is because you're going to be eating the clean. And not only that, because also the clean were likewise going to be sacrificed to the Lord. Because the Lord does not accept unclean. The Lord wants clean. That's why when we come to him, he cleans us up. That's why when he says those that enter into the kingdom of heaven, those who are going to be able to live with the Lord forever, they're going to have to have been cleaned up by the Lord. Because he's a clean Lord. He's a clean God. So to help us to understand what was his will, what is his purpose, what he has best for us, he devoted to Full chapters, Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. And he expanded his message as it related to that which is clean and that which is unclean. And we find that he speaks about various animals. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 14, there is listed many there. And the word of God points out to us that note what the word of God says first of all in verse 2 of, of, of Deuteronomy 14 he says for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth remember I've told you before that God wants his people to be the head and not the tail. He wants them to be able to have superior intellect, superior health, uh, to have a better way of life. Now he says, now, now, now these are for them who want to be his people. Now if you don't want to be his people, then you ain't got to follow this. But he says, if you want to be his people, then he says, this is what I have for you in order that you can be the tops. Then he points out quite clearly, he lists a number of things here. And, and, and in essence, the Lord is pointing out and saying that all animals that do not have a split hoof and who do not chew the cord, he says any animal that does not have both of those things, a split hoof and chew the cord, he says, if the animal does not do both or have both of these things, he says it's unclean. So the cow is clean because the cow has a split hoof and it chews the cord. The goat has a split hoof and it chews the cord. Sheep, they have split hoofs and they chew the cord. They are all right. Now there is this spectacular animal around who is sweet. Sweet man, and 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 and, 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 and you know she round, huh? You know her, huh? And she waddles a little bit when she moves. Even got a little sway for you, huh? Now, 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 and she produces a wide variety of meats. Sometimes she call it ham. Sometimes you call it pork chops. Uh, sometimes, uh, 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 you, 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 in fact, almost every part of her body you can eat. You can eat the snout. You can eat the tongue. You can eat even the, the feet. You can even eat the intestines. You know, they call it a fancy name, chitlins. <laughs> uh, you even consume the area around their ribs, called the spirits. 
There are some who even eat the brain of it. They even, some folks will even consume that little weakly part back there called the tail. It's amazing. And God knew that mankind would taste it. That's why he specifically spoke about it. That's why he, in fact, he, he, he called it out. He said in verse 8, and it's interesting, you know, that he identified this one here clearly. He said, and the swine, another name for pig, another name for hawk, hmm? and the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Now, beloved, the Lord said this here. And I figure the Lord must know why he's saying what he's saying. But, but in order that we might be helped a little bit, let me point out a couple of things that medical science has been able now to verify as it relates to this particular animal. And, and, and it's astounding. God stated it, and, and he oftentimes wants us to exercise faith in what he has said. Uh, but science has been able to bear out what the Lord has stipulated. The pork is infested with what is known as microscopic worms or parasites, which produce a disease known as trichinosis. And, 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 and those who eat the pork products, byproducts, beloved, many times they break down in a whole variety of illnesses, and it can be traced back to these parasites and worms that are found clogging their, 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 their arteries and whatnot, causing problems, um, even causing heart problems for persons, causing problems even, beloved, um, 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 in, in the in, in, in intestines. The consumption of bacon and the spear ribs and the pork chops and that Christmas ham is making a ham out of you. Now, now, I want you to understand. See, the Lord, it is true that when the Lord made all the animals, remember on that sixth day, he said it was very good. Every animal that God made was made for a purpose. And the pig was placed here as a natural, as a natural garbage collector. <laughs> That's why it was placed here. God had his way of naturally ensuring that his earth was going to be maintained. And, and everything was going to be well balanced. And the pig had its function. It was supposed to clean up the waste. But rather than us allowing the pig to do its work, we're cleaning up the pig. <laughs> and then we go to the doctor, and we say, Doctor, I got this pain here. I don't know what it is. And the doctor's been eating the pork too, so he, he can't even figure out what it is. <laughs> Beloved, if you follow what the Lord says, you won't mess up. Scripture also indicated that not only was God concerned about the animals on land, but God was also concerned about also uh, the, the creatures in the sea. And the Lord also specified, yes, you can eat the fish that are in the ocean, but there are certain creatures in the ocean that the Lord indicated they're not good for you either. So the Lord said, now, if it has fins and scales, he says, if it has those two things, you notice another two things? Remember, on land, it has to chew the cord and have a split hook. In the ocean, it has to have fins and scales. The Lord says, now, if they have those two things, it's all right for you. He says, but if they don't have that, he said, now, now, now you better leave it alone. And, and he said, now, now, regardless of if they got all those pretty names, 
He said, you still better believe, believe, leave it alone. He says, even those delicacies, the ones that cost a lot of money, like Sir, uh, Sir Lobster, huh? and, 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 and even Cunt Crab. He said, you got to leave that alone. He said, you even got to leave alone Miss Shrimp. As much of a delicacy as she might be, he said, you got to leave that alone. And he said, you got to leave alone all those clams. And, and, and then he said, because there's a king that's prevailing around here, known as King Conk, he says, the king of kings and lord of lords says that King Conk is not to be consumed by human beings. That's why, you know, the other day, a couple of years ago, when they had that big thing concerning, you know, uh, the, the, the Conk crisis, and all these people run into the hospital, uh, saying, sit this way and sit that way. I had no problem with that. Mm -mm. You see me? I had not one bit of sickness where that was concerned. None whatsoever. Now what's interesting, I have spoken to dietitians, and I remember a particular hospital I was visiting and a patient was picking up a dietary sheet. And the patient had been taken off all fats. The person was heavy and big, was strained in her heart, and the doctor had prescribed, look, I'm eliminating fat from your diet. And when she went to the dietitian, she went there with almost tears in her eyes. And she said, you mean I can't eat any more conk? <laughs> and the dietitian said, do you know that conk is so high in fat? She said, but I love my scotch conk. I can't help any more conk. The dietitian indicated to her, if you don't want to be conked out, you better stop eating conk. Beloved, God never intended that these shell fish were to be consumed by human beings. They were also placed in the ocean to help to clean the ocean. Now we have to permit these creatures to do the work they were assigned to do rather than assisting them in their occupation. God knows what's best for our bodies. And it is wise to follow the all wise God's dietary plan, beloved. You will live longer, you will live healthier, and you will be more productive in your life. And the Lord has indicated in Isaiah 66, verse 15 and 17, he gives a solemn warning. He says, therefore, behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots, like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and to rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one of the tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. You know those persons who on the outside say, yeah, yeah, you know, they look, they pretend, you know, they go to church, they sit down, but after they hide away in the house and they, they nibble in a little of this and a little of that, Lord says, I see what you're doing. And when I come to finally clean up this world by fire, and you're going to be licking on all that pork chop, and you're going to be licking on all that conk, well, when the fire comes, it's going to lick you too. The Lord is saying, beloved, he doesn't want us to be messed up. Rather, the Lord wants us to live long, to be healthy, holy, and happy. Our diet must be a balanced diet, and if we are going to consume meats, make sure it is clean, 
meats, the biblically description pertaining to clean meat. And beloved, this requirement, God did not nail to the cross with the death of Jesus because this requirement existed before sin. Clean and unclean was a designation that existed way back in Genesis. And in Acts chapter 10, even when Peter had that vision, and he saw a sheet come down from out of heaven, and there were all manner of creatures contained therein. And in Acts chapter 10, the word of God mentions that, that even while Peter was in vision, Acts 10 verse 12, and he saw all manner of four-footed beasts and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And you know, he was told to rise, kill, and eat. And you know what Peter said? He said, not so, Lord. Uh-uh, I will not do that. God does test us. Then, and he went on to say, for I have never eaten anything that is coming or unclean. And then God spoke to him a second time and said, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And so therefore a person say, now you see there? Therefore God cleansed and cleaned up those unclean animals. And the word, verse 16 says, this was done thrice, meaning three times. And then it was received up into heaven. Now you know what's interesting? Verse 17 says, now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. Peter was pondering this vision, thinking on it. Now I want you to note, Nowhere did it mention that Peter rose up and tried to eat any of the animals. That's significant. But as Peter was thinking and pondering on this vision and seeking to find out what it was all about, and the Spirit was with him, because verse 19 lets us know what the Spirit said unto him. And then as he was further contemplating it, verse 28, we hear Peter talking. Verse 28 says, And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. God gave him a vision of these animals to let him know that he Peter, God was using symbolism in order to press home to Peter that in reality he is saying that all human beings are equal in God's sight and that Peter who was a Jew was not to refer to any Gentile whether it's a Roman, whether it's a Greek, whether it's a Bahamian, whether it's a American, he is not to refer to any of them as being common or unclean simply because they're not a Jew. Because Jesus came to die for human beings. In fact, Jesus sent the pigs down the river. Devils on a given occasion when Jesus encountered them word of God lets us know in Matthew 8 in fact verse 32 that when Jesus cast out these devils uh, from these demoniacs and they said Lord Lord don't destroy us uh, but but let us enter into those pigs you see the devils like to get in pigs and the devils went in them read it it's in the word of God you know beloved Matthew 8 and, and, and after the devils got in them uh, then the pigs jumped over a ledge and ended up killing themselves in the river. <laughs> Have mercy, beloved. Don't let the devil get in you because it will cause you to jump off the ledge too. It pays to follow what the word of God says, beloved. Amen. In the vision that was given, it had to do with differentiating, beloved, not, not, not seeking with respect to animals, but it was pointing out that all mankind is the same in God's sight. It is significant that the designation pertaining to clean and unclean even existed way after Jesus returned to heaven. For in the last book of the Bible, do you know that the word of God still speaks about unclean? In the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 18, here is John the Revelator 
and John the Revelator is mentioning in the Word of God he's describing a false religious system and he parallels this false religious system to even unclean and hateful birds for he says in verse 2 of Revelation chapter 18 and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird if there was no more designation of that which was unclean then John the Revelator would not have understood and we would not understand what God means by this. It would not have made sense to maintain such a designation if there was no longer any such thing as clean and unclean beasts or birds or creatures. But because it still exists, such a designation makes sense. God is interested in what is best for us. That's why the word of God said in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, whatsoever ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Now we shared with you in a previous message pertaining to drinking. Now, some things, beloved, are fine to drink. God has no problem providing it is not fermented, uh, providing it is not colic, beer of any nature, liquor of any nature. You know, there was somebody who told somebody the other day, well, I don't drink alcohol, I only drink rum. <laughs> well, to help this person understand, God's also talking about rum. Whether it's the rum you get in the bar or if you're even drinking the rum you buy from the, from, from, from the store. Even if you're drinking bay rum, God don't want you to drink that there either. No kind of rum does the Lord want to go into your body, beloved. God does not want anything to go in which can sap you of life. And anything, beloved, that is going to create a dependence upon a chemical, even drugs, beloved, narcotic drugs, God says leave alone. Tobacco, God says leave alone. Anything that may have nicotine in it, anything even that may have caffeine in it. For caffeine is also an addictive drug. It has a poisonous alkaline in it, beloved. So that's why even certain coffees and even certain cola drinks that has caffeine in it is not good for you for it is creating a dependence in you on that thing and it has an insidious poison in it an alkaline in it beloved that is poisoning the system that's why God is saying leave it all alone anything that is going to cause a shortening of your life God does not want you to consume that beloved He's a particular God, and he's a holy God, but he's also a loving God, a caring God, and he recommends what's the best for us. So, beloved, take advantage of what's best, and believe you me, if you line up to what the Lord says, you can be in your 30s and 40s and 50s and still be looking and moving like a teenager as if you're in your 20s. Just look at me. I told you all before, I only get in gray hair in order to keep company with my wife. That's all. You know, she looks distinguished with that spot, so the Lord said, well, so that she won't feel too lonely. Huh? Uh, the reason for that, you know. But God, 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 beloved, will give us an abundant life if we are also willing to follow what he has outlined. And God would have us to do all for his glory and for his honor. So wives, when that husband says, help, my wife is killing me. Please don't let it be because of the diet. Actually, we hope it's not for other things too. <laughs> but since we're talking tonight on the diet, we don't want it to be as it relates to diet. 
nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus recognized that we indeed needed great help. And so he came down from glory, stepped into our humanity. And even as this week recalls, he went all the way to a cross at Calvary. And as he hung there on the cross, shedding his, shed blood, shedding his sacred blood, he was doing so in order that you and I might come to the fountain that's filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins but sinners that plunge therein are able to find all their sin stains removed beloved Jesus came down in order that you and I could go up by his life by his death by his resurrection Jesus offers you and me a better way of life. Jesus demonstrates that he is practically interested in our existence. When he hung there on the cross and when he was wounded in his head, he was wounded in his head in order that you and I can have clean thoughts. For the wounds in his head were for our our thoughts of sin. When he was wounded in his side, it was because of our feelings that are sinful at times. He was wounded in his hands. It was because of the actions that we do that are harmful and sinful at times. He was wounded in his feet. It was because of the places that we go and the deeds that we do that he says are sinful and wrong. And he was wounded in all of these areas in order to atone for our sins. That's why, beloved, I have no problem in doing what Jesus asked of me. Because when I see what he did for me, I can only help and respond in saying, Lord, what would thou have me do? What do you require of me? And he says, I only want your life. I only want to give you eternity. I want to give you a better way of life. So he says, would you be willing to surrender your lips to me? For if you do, then it will help me to regulate what goes into your mouth. Will you surrender your brain to me? If you do, then I'll help you in what you think. Will you surrender your feet to me? If you do, then I will guide you to where you need to go. Will you surrender your hands to me? Then I will enable you and I will assist you in the things that you need to do. He says, will you present your bodies to me? A living sacrifice. He says, I'm not interested in your, you being dead and shortening your life. He says, I want you to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto me, which is really your reasonable service. He says, am I asking too much of you? After all, look what I did for you. Tonight I ask you, is he asking too much of you? Tonight I ask you, would you respond to the Lord and simply say, Lord, 
I just surrender my all to you. Whatever you ask, Lord, I'm willing to do because I know that you love me and that you only want what's best for me. So tonight, as we end this service, I ask you simply, are you willing to just surrender your all to Jesus and to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord? Are you willing to do that tonight? If you are, won't you just slip to your feet with me?